So today, what I'm going to show you is exactly how to create free tools like ChatGPT4, but access it for free without paying for ChatGPT+. And I'm not creating this because I'm a cheapskate. I'm actually creating it because I can't access ChatGPT4. I've hit the limit pretty quickly on my ChatGPT4 prompts, which means that even though I pay for this tool, I can't access it. So for example, if I try and use one of my free tools that I've created myself, and then I ask you what tools do you recommend, it's going to say, sorry, mate. You've hit the limits. So whether you're looking for free AI SEO tools, whether you're looking for free versions of ChatGPT, whether you've hit the current usage cap on GPT-4, whatever the problem is, this video is going to help you. And I'm going to show you how I bypassed it myself today and how you can do the same. So the first place I'm actually going to go to is Claude over here. Now, for example, when I hit the limit on my usage on ChatGPT today, I actually switched over to Claude and just did the same thing with Claude. As you can see, I got some YouTube title ideas for my content and just pasted in exactly what I was trying to get the answer from on ChatGPT and got the answer on Claude instead. And the beautiful thing about Claude is that it's just as good as ChatGPT4, but you can access it for free just by typing in your email address. And if you can't access it from your location, well, there are ways around that. You know, I'm sure you can find some Reddit threads on VPNs or something like that. I won't go into detail on that, but basically this is just as good. It can handle massive prompts. The token limit on Claude is, is good, but also the output from Claude is good. It's quite an intelligent tool. I would say genuinely is more intelligent than using something free like Bard. Bard is a bit more messy. doesn't give you the same prompts. I mean, you can see this was a really long prompt that we actually gave it. So if I copy this and scroll all the way down, we can see that that was a prompt, which was 371 words, right? So if I type the same thing into Bard, which is another free chat GPT alternative, another free tool, I, I honestly don't think like the outputs are as good. It's going to go into some random tips and stuff like that. A lot of the titles are really boring, as you can see, whereas these ones are pretty interesting and intriguing, and I'm actually going to use that on one of my YouTube videos. So if you hit the current usage cap or you're looking for a free alternative to chat GPT, Claude is really good. Bard is okay, but I would say it's substandard versus Claude. The thing I do like about bard.google.com, which you can access for free as an AI tool, is that you do get different drafts, right? So you can see different alternatives and different answers to the same prompt, which is pretty useful to be fair. And you can just click through them or you can refresh them and get new answers like that. But either way, you've got two AI tools that you can replace with chat GPT for. And honestly, they do very similar things. Now, you might say, right, I want to access ChatGPT4, not for the actual quality of the outputs, but for actually using ChatGPT4 for scraping the internet. And if that's the case, what you can do is hop on over to bing.com. And if we go to Ask Bing Chat over here, this is basically the co-pilot of ChatGPT4. We can click stop responding like that. And it's pretty intelligent. You basically get all the features of ChatGPT4 inside Bing for free so that you can access it for free and you can ask it whatever you want. So for example, we can say, you know, related to LSI, scrape my top 10 competitors for the keyword AI SEO in 2024 and give me some relevant SEO entities and LSIs. And you can see it will search Bing for my keyword. Tell me who is scraped the actual content for. Give me some relevant SEO entities and give me some relevant latent semantic indexing LSI keywords for AI SEO tools. Now you don't have to use it for LSI. This is just an example to show you how it can actually scrape the internet for what we want. And the only problem with Bing is that you only really can go back and forth with the chatbot five times in the same thread, but that's okay because then you can just click new topic and start off where you need to. But either way, between Claude, Bard, Bing chat, you've got some good chat GPT-4 alternatives, which are free AI tools. So that even if you hit the limit or you're just looking for free tools for your team because you don't want to pay for ChatGPT+, then these are some great alternatives. Now, you might not want to use Bing for scraping the web or you might not want to use it for just replying to prompts. Maybe you want to use ChatGPT4 for actually generating images because it's got Dali 3. So what you can actually do is use Dali 3 inside Microsoft Bing, bing.com forward slash images forward slash create. And from here, you can actually generate a crazy amount of images. You can see you get 66 different images that you can create using ChatGPT4, which is really powerful. And if we type something random in, for example, like an, a an SEO obsessed AI robot with crazy eyes wearing a Rolex and lots of gold typing on his laptop, 
it will generate the images for you, but also it's going to give you all the previous generated images that you've created on ChatGPT4. Now, I would actually say that bing.com forward slash create is actually better than ChatGPT Plus because if you want to find previous images on ChatGPT, yeah, you can find some from today, etc. But it won't tell you where the images are. It doesn't give you any history on it. Whereas on this tool right here, which is free, Number one, it generates four different images in one prompt, which saves you a lot of time. It's actually more productive than using ChatGPT directly. Additionally, the images are actually quite decent and you can just keep changing the prompt if you want to get better images. You can create 66 at one time. So the chances of running out of credits are very low. And then additionally, you can see your history of all the different images you've created previously. So for example, when I was trying to generate an image for one of my thumbnails previously, these are the images it gave me. And then it also gives me the prompt that I created previously. So I can see, right, here's the images I created. I've got four different options. And additionally, I've got the prompt that I used and I could use again in the future and tweak it to make even better thumbnails. Either way, we're winning and it's much better organized than ChatGPT and we're not stopped by usage limit as well. Really powerful. Now, the other thing that ChatGPT does, I don't know many people that actually use this functionality, but you can go inside makersuite.google.com and use vision inside Google AI Studio instead of using ChatGPT. So if you're limited by either paying for ChatGPT and you want a free alternative or you have hit your usage cap and you still want to use ChatGPT vision, well, you can do that inside Google AI Studio at makersuite.google.com for free. And if it's not available in your location, like I said before, there are ways around that to change your location essentially. Now, the cool thing about vision is that you can actually insert images and then the AI will generate responses based on that image. Now, you might be wondering how do you do that? Because if you go to create new and then preform prompt, you can see that the image section is grayed out. You can't upload any images if you want to use the vision. So what you have to do is go to model over here, Gemini Pro version, Gemini Pro vision. You can change the temperature. And from here, you can upload images. So I can upload an image onto my Google Drive. So for example, this YouTube thumbnail that I've just uploaded, you can see it right here. And then we can say, rate this YouTube thumbnail out of 10, hit run. And then it will actually give you a rating for the thumbnail out of 10. And you can see it also describes the image. So for example, it says the thumbnail is visually appealing and captures the viewer's attention. It's vibrant, composition is interesting. And it does a good job of conveying the message of the video, which is about making money online. So I actually knew the topic of the content and it explains what works well. So for example, the use of dollar signs and the image of the robot, etc. So thanks very much for complimenting my design skills. Now, what we could actually say is how would you make this YouTube thumbnail better? And the good thing about this is that uh, if you want to get feedback on any, any images that you create for YouTube, for SEO, for LinkedIn, for social media, whatever you're using to create images for, well, you can get neutral feedback from someone who isn't the designer and sort of see angles that you haven't found before. So for example, it's given us three different recommendations on how to improve it. So for example, adding a more prominent call to action, making it more personal, making the thumbnail more relevant to a larger audience. So right now it's probably designed for SEO, not for a bigger audience. And these are three ways that we can quickly improve the thumbnail. You probably wouldn't have thought of myself. Another one that I haven't really tried yet is Llama 2. And this is basically Meta's, aka Facebook's version of AI. So what you can do is if you click download model, pop in your details, accept the T's and C's, and then you'll receive an email like this, as you can see, right? And it will give you a list of the models that you can use. All the files are hosted on GitHub, as you can see right here. So you can download this. And it's got details of exactly how to set up the download. Like I say, I've never tried it before, but that is an interesting opportunity. Doesn't seem too complicated to set up and it might be worth a try. And it's got some cool features. Like for example, you can create images directly inside Llama, as you can see. You can chat with it just kind of like you would with ChatGPT. Even supplies reels inside Meta AI. So you can basically get tutorial videos with reels right here, as you can see it. And it comes set with 28 different AI avatars. So. It's pretty interesting there. Now, if you want to use just a basic version of Llama, what you can actually do is if you go to po.com, this is another free AI SEO tool and you can get access to loads of different AIs and Llama 2 is available right there. And then you can start using it like so. And there's even some more ways to generate images directly inside Po, for example, like Stable Diffusion. 
so basically with everything that I've shown you today, there should be no problems accessing AI or using the power of chat GPT-4, but in different ways. I mean, you can even see that chat GPT-4 is enabled inside Poe.com as well, just with limited access. So that's basically it. That's five free alternatives to chat GPT that you don't need to pay for. Bing chat is free. Claude is free. Bard is free. Bing.com forward slash create is free and makersuite.google is free as well. So you can use all of these alternatives to generate AI content without being held back by ChatGPT's limit. Or if you're on a budget, then you can do all of this for free. And I hope this video helped you. Now, if you want to get access to my free ChatGPT SEO course that basically shows you how to increase your SEO traffic using ChatGPT and AI, feel free to get that. It's got over a hundred tutorials and templates and prompts and SAPs and free tools, etc. You can get instant access using the link in the comment description below. Otherwise, you can book in a free SEO strategy session where we can teach you how to get more leads, traffic and sales from SEO using link building and we'll basically give you an SEO domination plan. We'll answer any questions that you have. You'll discover how to quickly outrank your competitors with link building and we'll show you the best link building strategy for your website based on your niche, etc. So thanks so much for watching. Appreciate it. Bye bye.